in Jesus' name, amen. Today will be part two of my two-part study in regards to Are You Willing to Stand? Uh, last week, we had the Pathfinders and Adventures. My desire has been, this is, these two presentations obviously have not been, or not, nor are to be, some deep theological type of studies. It's for God to encourage us and for us to understand and what He's calling us to do. God's appealing to His people that now is the time to stand for Him. Not in the political realm, but on a thus saith the Lord in your life. We're told in the book, The Great Controversy, that, you know what, there might be people here that one day will be brought before the leaders of this world to defend what you believe. Are you willing to stand for God? <clears throat> in part one, quickly, we looked at the story of David and Goliath. And we saw that it was easy for David not to stand for the Lord. Nobody thought, would have thought any otherwise if he just came, brought his brother's food, and went back to dad. Can you say amen? Nobody would have thought any different. But David chose to stand for the Lord, though it was easy for him not to. Can you say amen? He stood for God, and God blessed him and delivered him in this great battle Today's presentation is, are you willing to stand when there are severe consequences? I want to read again our verse that we read in Isaiah. It says, fear not. What's this promise that God gives His people? For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. And then what's this next promise He gives us? I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And God never lets down on His promises. If He's promised it, it will happen. God says, I will strengthen you. I will help you. I would, uh, would uphold you with my righteous right hand. Today, I'm going to look at two stories that I'm sure you're familiar with. It's found in the book of Daniel. And there's so much to these stories, but what I want to focus on are the kind of people they are. What kind of people we see here in Daniel chapter 3 and in Daniel chapter 6? Their character. Their what? Their character because we see that in these stories they are facing severe consequences, but yet they chance to choose to stand for God, though their life depends on it. Can you say amen? Let's look at who these people are and why they would be able to stand for the Lord in this way. So if you have your Bibles, I want us to first look at Daniel chapter 3. You know the story again, I'm sure, but I'm not going to focus on every detail. Go to Daniel 3. I want to begin to focus on when these three Hebrews chose not to bow down to this law that was given by this king. When you get to Daniel chapter 3, you can say amen. Daniel chapter 3. So I want to quickly just review the beginning of the story. The king of Babylon, do you remember his name? Nebuchadnezzar chose and brought a decree that everybody was to be called together and to worship this golden image that was erected there. And the Bible says that he called all from his realm, and they came. And then the Bible says that when you hear the music, everybody is to bow down and pay reverence and worship and honor to this statue. If they do not, what would be the consequences of their decisions? You'd be thrown into the fire, which would mean what? Death. And the people came together, people of all the realm of Babylon, those uh, Jews and other people all came together. And the Bible now says in verse 12, go to verse 12, 
And it says, there are certain Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. For him, the Bible to say there were certain Jews, it's implying that there were many others in the crowd. Yes or no? Yes. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and fury, gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so they brought these men before the king. Okay? So, of all the people that were there in this province and they hear the music, the Bible says that one, two, three, how many? Three chose to say, no, we're not going to disregard what God has said. We're not going to um, not show reverence and worship to only the God of heaven. We will not bow down to this image. And out of all the multitude, yes, even those who knew it was, right, was not right to do it, only three of God's people were willing to stand for God in severe consequences here. Are you with me? And they were brought before the king, and the king was going to give them a second chance. What was he going to give them? A second chance. Now, look at verses 14 and 15. And Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the gold image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and psaltery in symphony with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which which which, um, I have made, good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who shall deliver you from my hands? Now, let's begin to take a look at these men. My first question is, is that why would King Nebuchadnezzar choose or desire to give them a second chance? Well, you need to know, number one, that they had been faithful in the performance of every duty, that they were people of integrity. You see, they and King Nebuchadnezzar knew that these men had always been faithful in every duty he had given them. Can you say amen? He trusted them. They were people that he knew that they would always be um, uh, people of honesty and integrity and would never uh, do him wrong. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were people of integrity, and the king knew it. And because he knew that these were a people of integrity, he wanted to give them a second chance. Can you say amen? Now, we're looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who they are, how they were able to stand for the Lord, that we first see that God is calling his people to be a people of integrity. Do what is right. Wherever God has placed you in life, do it to the best ability that you can. Be a people of excellence. There's a story I think I told in my class. And this 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 person got falsely accused of getting in trouble. Does that happen? Yes, no? Yes. And his punishment was that the teacher said, and again, he was falsely accused, but of course, he, he had, and the punishment was, he had to go to the room, and the room was a complete mess, there were desks in there, and his punishment was that he had to clean the whole room. And I'm not just talking about putting the things back in the right order, I'm talking about getting that and the paper and wipe down, right, clean it. The whole day went by, and he was in that room, cleaning that room. The time came for the teacher to come in. And what the teacher did, listen now, when she came in to the room, she didn't do this. She went underneath the desk and did this. What did I say she did? Underneath the desk. 
And when she wiped her finger underneath the desk, it was as clean as anything. This boy was a Christian, and he would go on to say that he knew that if he was in this situation, whatever it was, wrongly or not, God had called him to be a person of excellence. And if he was going to clean that room, he was going to clean not just the top of the desk, but underneath the desk because God has called us to be a people of integrity and excellence. And that's who Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was. We're now in verse 16. Verse 16 says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this manner. Number two, they had purposed in their hearts that they would not dishonor the God of heaven. They were settled. They had already settled it in their hearts that no matter what would happen, they would never dishonor their God. It was settled. And this is the kind of heart we need to have that no matter what happens, my first allegiance is to honor my Savior. No matter what. Can you say amen? We're looking at what kind of people Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was that they could stand there with no fear whatsoever. Number one, they were people of what? Of integrity and excellence that whatever they did, wherever the position that God had put them in, they were going to do it to the best of their ability and the king noticed it and he gave them a second chance because God's people are to be a people of integrity and excellence. Number two, They had purposed it in their hearts that they were going to never, ever dishonor the God of heaven. We, my friends, need to put it in our hearts that no matter what happens, we will not dishonor our God. We have to purpose it in our hearts. Can you say amen? Next verse. We're now in verse 17. Then the Bible says, if that is the case, what's the next two words? Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. Number three, they had faith in God's power to deliver. These were men that not only lived a life of integrity and excellence, They had purposed it in their hearts that they would never dishonor God. And number three, they believed in the power of God's deliverance. But no, there's more. Look at verse 18. It says, But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. So not only do they believe, listen now, in the delivering power of God, number four is they trusted completely in God's will. That, hey, you know, if even God chooses not to deliver us right now, now he will eventually, because listen now, friends, if they would have died in that fire, they would have been delivered at the resurrection. But they trusted completely in the will of God. They said, well, but if not, we will trust in God's will for us. We will put our complete trust in what God has prepared for me. What a people. They had been faithful in the performance of every duty. Young people, at school, whatever. If you have to do homework, do it to the best of your ability. Can you say amen? If you're at work and you have an assignment, do it to the best of your ability, can you say amen? Shoot to be a people of excellence. Shoot to be a people of integrity. This is what God has called us to be. Number two, they had purposed in their hearts that whatever, they would never dishonor the God of heaven. We are to purpose in our hearts that no matter what happens in our life, God is number one. He will not be dishonored. Can you say amen? Number three, they had faith in God's power to deliver. God is the almighty God. He's the creator of heavens and the earth. He has power to deliver you. Amen. But number four, they had trusted completely in God's will. 
Verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, an expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The king's not playing around anymore. And he spoke and commanded that they they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Verse 20. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning of fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and the other garments that were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Now don't miss this. Verse 22, therefore, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Verse 23, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Let me, did did you catch it? You see, when they got to the fire, who was waiting for them? We know God was waiting for them there because it says that the other man died before they even got to the opening. The other man, when they got to the furnace, it was so bad that they died. But we see that even before Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell into the furnace, God was already there waiting for them. God was there. And the king saw it. Verse 24, the king was astonished and arose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Do you not, did you not cast three men into the midst of the fire? And he answered, Yeah, yeah, true, O king. Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt, and from the fourth is like the Son of God. He was waiting for them there. He was there, and they were there with Jesus, and God honors those who honor him. These men, they had been faithful in their duty, a people of integrity. They purposed in their heart not to dishonor the God of heaven. They had faith in God's power to deliver, and they trusted completely in God's will. Now, here's the last one here. Now, look at verse 27. And the satraps, the administrators, the governors, the kings, the counselors, gathered together, and they saw these men whose bodies... Um, Uh, The fire had no power, the hair of their head was not singed, nor were the garments affected, and and the smell of fire was not on them. And Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. And they have um, um, frustrated the king's word and yielded their bodies that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Verse 29, Therefore, I make a decree that any people nations or languages which speaks anything amiss amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their house shall be made in ash heap. Don't you miss number five. God put them there to be a light in the darkness to all. God set them in this place here that they could be a light to everybody there. And as they were a man of integrity and excellence, as they purposed in their heart never to dishonor God, as they chose to say, I I believe in God's delivering power, and I will also trust in God's will for me, and God put them there in that situation there to be a light to the king, to the administrators, and to all there because the Bible says that the word of God's deliverance went to all the realm. Wherever God has put you, he's put you there to be a light to others. Did you hear what I said? Whatever job God has allowed you to receive in your life, he's put you there to be a light to others. If you're in school (coughs) and you're there in class, God has put you there so you can be a light to others. In the book, Patriarchs and Prophets, it says, by the deliverance of his faithful servants, the Lord declared that he takes his stand with the oppressed and rebukes all earthly powers that rebel against the authority of heaven. 
the three Hebrews declare to the whole nation of Babylon that their faith in him whom they worshipped. To who? The whole nation. They relied on God. In the hour of their trial, they remembered the promise. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest to the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And in a marvelous manner, their faith in the living word had been honored. Look at this. In the sight of all, the tidings of their wonderful deliverance were carried to many countries by the representatives of the different nations that had been invited by Nebuchadnezzar to the, de to the dedication. Through the faithfulness of his children, God was glorified in all the earth. Do you see how God works? If Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had chosen to tie their sandals while the music was played, the purpose God had for them would not have come to fruition. Now, what we're going to do, th there was one, one who was associated with Daniel, with Shadrach, I just gave you the answer, so I was just going to say that. There was one who was associated with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. His name was, but he wasn't there. Now, we believe through documents and historical documents that Daniel was out of town. But I'm about to show you in Daniel chapter 6 that the same character that was in these three was exactly found in Daniel. Go to Daniel chapter 6. We have another story now. Anybody know this story? Daniel in the lion's den. Say amen when you get there. Now we have another situation where this, it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom of uh, 120 satraps to be over the whole kingdom and over these, three, and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no loss. So he, he put together, the king said, the Bible says, 120 satraps, but over them, we're going to choose three, and one was whom? Daniel. <clears throat> then this Daniel, verse 3, distinguished himself above the governors and satraps. What did Daniel do? He what? He distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because, look at this, an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. J just hazard a guess on what kind of man Daniel was. Come on now. Like his friends, Daniel had been faithful in the performance of every duty and integrity. And because Daniel was a man of excellence and integrity, he, was, he distinguished himself above all the others and was then chosen or about to be the second in command of the kingdom. Can you say amen? Same. Because God has called his people to distinguish themselves to be a people led by the Spirit, a people of integrity and excellence, no matter what they do or where they are. Amen. Now we keep going. Verse 7. <clears throat> it says, All the governors of the kingdom and administrators and satraps, the counselors, the advisors, have consulted together to establish a royal statute to make a firm decree that whoever partitions any god or man for how long? 30 days. Except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of, of lions. Now, how long was this decree? A was this a lifelong decree, yes or no? No, it, it wasn't like a decree for all of life. It was for a month. For how long? For a month. Just one month. Just one month, Daniel. You can, you can close your windows for one month, can't you? You can, you, you can go pray, pray in the bathroom for one month, can't you? 
what, what kind of man was Daniel? Now verse 10. Now when Daniel knew, did he know? When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in, in the upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was the custom since early days. Verse 11, and these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication for his what? For his God. Let me ask you or tell you, friends, just like his friends, he had purposed in his heart that he would not dishonor the God of heaven. Uh, I, I don't care what decree, I don't care what signed, I have purposed in my heart that God is number one. I will never dishonor my God. As I've always done, I'm going to pray towards Jerusalem with the windows open. Can you say amen? Now look, I, I, I love what is written in Patriarchs and Prophets here. She says, he quickly read their malignant purpose in framing the decree, but he did not change his course in the single particular. Look at this. Why should he cease to pray now when he most needed to pray? Can you say amen? But why am I going to stop praying now? I have to pray more than ever. Rather, would he relinquish life itself than his hope of help in whom? In God. <clears throat> you see, friends, when, 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 faced, when faced with circumstances in life, are, are we the same faithful people to God when all is well and when all is not well? It's easy to be maybe a person of integrity. It, maybe it's easy to, oh, I'm never going to dishonor God when things are going well. Maybe it's easy, but when things are not going well, are we the same type of believers in regards to that. Can you say amen? Look at this. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 4, 545. From the story of Daniel's deliverance. Don't miss this. We may learn. What, we, what, what does she say? We may what? We may learn that in seasons of trial and gloom, God's children should be just what they were when their prospects were bright with hope and their surroundings all that they could desire. Daniel in the lion's den was the same Daniel. Look at this. Daniel in the lion's den was the same Daniel who stood before the king as chief among the ministers of state, as a prophet of the Most High. A man whose heart is stayed upon God, whose what? Whose heart is stayed upon God will be the same in the hour of his greatest trial as he is in the prosperity when light and favor of God and of man beam upon him. Can you say amen? Uh, he, he, nothing. Uh, when, when things are bad, hey, we're the same. Because it's when trials come is when God's people truly shine bright. Now we're distinguishing someone who is a true believer in Jesus. Verse 14. In verse 14 it says... <clears throat> And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men approached the king and said, O king, no, O king, that this law of the Medes and the Persians, that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. It's sort of The laws of the kings and the Persians could not be changed. Whence a law was given, it can never be changed. Isn't it interesting then that if an earthly law can never be changed, and, but your God's eternal law can be? No. Never. Verse 17, no, verse 16. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, look at this, your God, what does he say? 
your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the um, signets of his lords, that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be what? Changed. Look, look at verse 20. Verse 20. And when he came to see the den, this is the next day after he rose up, the king did. When he came to see the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke to Daniel, saying, Daniel. Servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve, continually been able to deliver you from the lions? Look at verse 21. And Daniel said, O king, live forever. Look at this, verse 22. My God sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Number three here, like his friends, he trusted completely in God's will. Daniel said, I, here's the decree, I, I know it, but guess what? I'm going to be the same believer I've always been, and I'm going to trust in the will of God. We see the same type of character with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and with Daniel. Are you with me? Look at verse 23. And now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and with no injury, whatever was found on him, because he believed in his God. Number four, like his friends, he had faith in God's power to deliver it. Do you guys remember number five? Now, look at this now. Do you remember that back in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's day, who, who was waiting for him, them, in the fire? Now, look at verse 24 quickly. Verse 24 says, And the king gave the command, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives, and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. Just like... In Daniel 3, right when they were approaching the furnace, the men died. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not because God was waiting for them there. Can you say amen? The same thing, when they lowered Daniel down on that den, the Bible says that even before the others hit the ground, they were devoured. But you know what? By him touching the ground, what does that tell us? That God was waiting for him. <laughs> Or he sent an angel to be there, of course. God was waiting for him. Same, same scenario. Do you see it? And now, look at verse 26. I make a decree. This is the king now. This is King Darius. I make a decree that every dominion, my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall not be destroyed. His dominion shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. Man, how did King Darius know so much about the living God? <laughs> because guess what? God put him there to be a light in darkness to all. And this king says, mercy, mercy. I, I think Daniel must have witnessed to the king. Can you say, can he, this, he's the king and delivers and works signs and miracles because wherever God puts us, whatever the situation, God has called us to be a light. I wish I had time to tell you about Joseph. Do you know that Joseph, Joseph was someone of integrity and, and excellence, so much so that Potiphar put him above everything in his household. Can you say amen, Joseph? Say, we can go through the list, it's the same. Joseph, not only was a, a person, a young person of integrity and excellence, guess what? On his way to Egypt, he purposed in his heart that he would never dishonor God. He'd made that decision. Number three, he, he believed in God's delivering power when he was there in the jail and everything else was going bad for him. He, he was falsely accused of, of adultery and, and rape, but he purposed in his heart to say, I'll stand for God. I believe in, in his delivering power. Guess what? And he put his trust in God's will. Can you say amen? It's the same. 
And here's the thing. What happened to Joseph? Was he a light in the jail cell, yes or no? Was he a light in Potiphar's house? Was he a light before the king of Pharaoh? Same. These, and guess what? Throughout history, throughout history, we've seen the same in many of God's people. We've seen the same type of character in many of God's people. And what about God's last day people? You tell me, you tell me. If we have to one day stand before the leaders of the world, if we have to one day, what kind of people is God calling his last day people to be? Let me tell you, a people of integrity and excellence. Can you say amen? A people that will put it in their hearts that I will not dishonor God no matter what happens. Never. A people that in the highest highs and the lowest lows will be just as faithful to God no matter what. Can you say amen? A people who believe in God's delivering power and a people who will put their complete trust in the will of God for their life. And guess what? And no matter what God has put you, no matter what God has you, you are called to be a light. And the light shines brightest in darkness. There might be people in your job that give you a hard time. Where do you work? No, 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 no. <laughs> but God has called us to be a people of integrity and excellence. And to show that person who Jesus looks like. There might be people in your school that you don't get along with, but God has called you to be different. Do you guys see what we saw here with these people? Revelation 12, 17, last verse here, and the dragon was in wrath with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. You see, friends, it's the minority. It's the what? It's always the minority. Last one, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 508. Look at this. But the Lord did not forget his own. Can you say amen? As in the days of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, so in the closing period of earth's history, the Lord will work mightily in behalf of those who stand steadfastly for the right. Can you say amen? God, in these last days, are looking again for those who will embrace these qualities. He who walked with the Hebrews worthy in the fiery furnace will be with his followers wherever they are. His abiding presence will confront and sustain in the midst of the time of trouble, such as never has been since there was a nation. And that time is coming, and it's coming very soon. His chosen ones will stand unmoved. Why? Because they have chosen that they will never dishonor God. They are a people of integrity and excellence. They believe in God's delivering power. They have put their lives in God's will, and they understand that wherever God has placed them, whatever is happening in your life, the good and the bad, he has chosen you to be a light in those Ch uh, situations and places. Can you say amen? Uh, Satan, with all the host of evil, cannot destroy the weakest of God's saints. And God has called us to stand for him. In my appeal, to his people, for myself, is that we desire to have these qualities that we see appearing in God's men and women, not just in the Bible, but throughout history. They are people of complete integrity and excellence. Who here today desires to be that kind of a believer? What about anyone here desire to be a person that Purposes it in their hearts that they will not dishonor God no matter what. Anybody here? Amen.
Anybody here desire to be a people, a person that will believe in God's delivering power in their lives? Anybody? What about that you will put your complete trust in God's will, though you might not understand things happening, and know that whatever situation is happening in your life, good, bad, any place God has put you, work, school, whatever, any place on this world, God has put you there to be a, to be a light to others. Anybody here desire to be a light? Amen. I do. And I'll close with this. You see, these people had learned to depend on God with the little things, that when the big things came, they were ready. Being faithful in the little things will prepare us to be faithful in the big things. Father God, thank you so much for being with us today. And Lord, like, da- like David, as we saw in part one, dear God, and we can go down the list with David, actually, the same, same, same. David was a, a young man of integrity. He, 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 kept, he kept watch over that flock with excellence and integrity. And dear God, you're asking your people to distinguish themselves from the others. To be a people of integrity and excellence. Interesting that that the people could find nothing wrong with the life of Daniel. They had to turn to his religious beliefs. They could find nothing in the accounts that Daniel stole some money or maybe everything was clear and Shadrach, men, women of integrity and excellence. That when they come to look and they check underneath the desk, yes, that is also clean. A people that will purpose in their hearts that they will not dishonor God in their life. To believe in your delivering power, to trust in your will for our lives. And Lord, no matter the circumstance, good, bad, no matter the place, no matter the job, no matter the whatever it is, Lord, you have put us there to be a light so that everyone can see who the true God is. May we rise to this occasion. And we know, of course, Lord, that you, you stand for us. Lord, we, we have no strength or power. We, but we know that being filled with the Spirit, clinging to Jesus, we can be these kind of people, especially today in these last days. And it will happen because the Bible says... And the spirit of prophecy confirms that you will have a people like this. The question is, is do we desire to be part of that group? Lord, you saw the hands of your people. I don't know what, where they are, what's ha- Lord, whatever it is. Today we've chosen to say, yes, we will take up this bet. We will take this challenge. We will be these kind of people by your grace, by your strength. This will be us. And may your glory lighten Pensacola and Milton and Gulf Breeze and Fairhope and Atmore and wherever else we might be living, dear God, wherever else you might uh, 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 guide us and lead us, Lord. Be with the youth in school, out of school. Be with the people in their job, out of job, in their homes. We have chosen to be these kind of people. Lord, bless us and use us in Jesus' name. Amen.